Hey there, on this video I'm going to show you how to set up your Synology NAS. There's no big difference between is it um, a 720 or 920 or any plus type of series model. They'll be pretty much very similar, all of them. So what are you going to do first? You're probably going to uh, add RAM if you decide to upgrade your RAM. In order to upgrade the RAM, you just lift these things slide these drives out there's no drive probably at the start but you will see that if you can upgrade ram if it's plus series you can do that here on the on the right hand side on the side all you need to do is put it in the slot slide it in and push it down hope you can see that you put it in click that's it that's ram installed um then what you can do, if you choose chose to add cash, and you you need support cash, this plus series or plus series now come with cash actually on synologies. So you take these ones out. I already installed cash here, but it's a little pin you can push, so it's going to release the SSD. You slide it in into the, into the slot. I'll try to show you. Put the slide it in the connector and push it in, don't break it, that's it, click, that's all done, close the lid, just make sure you do it the right way, and <laughs> it's done, then you move on to the hard drives, if you chose to have hard drive, you can put hard drive, if you chose to have SSD, these trays, trays got extra holes for SSD, so if you put them, you will see that the holes match, use the screws included in the package, Screw them in, that's your SSD there. Hard drive, you just put hard drive in, line up with the screw like holes on the sides, make sure they are flat at the bottom. Use these things to actually fix them in place. One side, other side is a really quick process. That's it, your hard drive goes into the tray. It doesn't matter what order you put them in. Make sure you don't force anything, slide them in the bottom, that's it, to the end, lock it, same as other hard drive, put it in, make sure it slides in easily, there's no friction, slide it in, lock it. Then um, that's it, the hardware side is all done on your NAS, all you need to do then is connect to your either modem, rotor, switch whatever you got, wherever you got LAN connection, where you're going to keep this NAS on your desktop or somewhere uh, in, next to your router or something in a cabinet or wardrobe, wherever you choose. If you've got multiple LAN ports, you can choose any of them. So you can connect actually either one or both LAN connections to your switch or router or modem. If you connect both two LAN, LAN uh, cables to your switch, then potentially you can enable something called load balancing, which means that if you have more users connecting, all data will be like uh, shifted like between two rivers, <laughs> let's say that. So you can actually increase the speed of data transfers. So otherwise, if you got multiple users connecting through a single LAN port, you will be sharing one gigabit port. If you got two LAN ports, Potentially, each user can get his own one gigabit connection. And the last thing what is left then, just obviously connect um, power cable. Um, it might be tricky for some, you just need to line it up. That's it, connect it. Once you have done that, these two connections are done. Press the start button. Uh, and after 30 seconds, it's going to blink at the start. After 30 or so seconds, it's going to give you a beep. That means our boot is completed. From that point, you should be able to find this NAS on your mobile, the Arsenal app, and start the setup process on your mobile. This is where you're going to focus on. Otherwise, um, you can do it on the browser. Use download on your Windows or Mac Arsenal G Finder app, which is going to find this NOG. And you can go to browse, uh, it's going to open up a browser wizard where you can go through the setup process. Uh, other option would be going opening your browser and typing in find.snology.me, I guess it was the correct, 
and it's going to try to find this node G in your network and connect that way. We're going to move on to a setup process now, so you can actually see how things are being set up on the, on the software side, inside the Synology NAS. So this was the part of uh, hardware, how you put things together and connect to electricity and your network. Okay, now we can move on to the software side of things. And the uh, first thing what you need to do is go to your app store and get your DS Finder app. So if you search for Synology, you should be able to find this app among those all Synology created apps. So once you have installed it, you open it, then um, search for the new NAS. If you scroll down, you should find a new NAS added to your network. If you did um, add drives and, and connected it, if you, if you can't see that uh, NAS here, you can just go and uh, choose install new device and find it that way. If that doesn't work, you will need to go to a desktop, to a computer, uh, and install operating system on your on your computer, through your computer on Synology. And then you can start set up process from there. But now it has found it. So this is the 720 plus in this case. We can uh, move on. It's gonna ask us to create a username and um, strong password. So make sure you use capital letter, small letter, a number, a special character. Otherwise, it's not gonna let you uh, move forward. It's gonna say that its password is too weak and you can't continue. So let's put something difficult here so we can move on. Okay, let's try this password if it's gonna go through or not. Yes, you accepted. If you want to improve things, you can uh, opt in for anonymous uh, analytics. So you can pick, you can help actually Snowgy to improve their um, product if you do so. Uh, what you will want to download is uh, apps called Drive, Moments and Audio. Drive is for uh, something similar like Dropbox. So you can have your folder on your Snowgy or on your computer, whatever you put inside this folder is going to be automatically synchronized uh, among across all the devices that has this drive app installed either those are computers or tablets or phones or whoever has this drive app will have these files synchronized all the time and then moments uh, something for backing up your videos and photos and uh, for organizing also your photos so you can find uh, photos based on location that they've been taken, date, or uh, people found on these photos, or even um, objects in those photos. And then DS Audio, which is uh, if you want to say, uh, store some music files and access those music files over the internet or locally as well. So these are the most commonly downloaded apps, and this is something you, should, you could consider getting as well. So in our case, <clears throat> we don't need that. What we want to do now, Snowgy hasn't made it very easy for people to understand what to do next because at this point you might feel like, okay, the setup process has finished, has been finished and you can start using Snowgy NOS, but uh, that is not true because as you can see, storage um, is zero byte, which means there is no storage available. You can connect to your NAS, but there's nothing else you can do and Snowgy hasn't made it very easy for people to understand. It's very confusing and they should actually change this. What you need to do is you need to create a RAID, which is a drive block protection redundancy, and you need to create a volume. And um, this is actually not possible on a mobile device. So this, this, you will need to actually go into a desktop version of doing things. So either you move on the desktop or you just go for the option, something called um, like an online version. Let's, let's have a look. How do we switch into a desktop mode? So it should be somewhere in settings. Here we go. If you go on the settings and choose desktop mode, 
you should be able to use now Synology just like you would be using it on a desktop. So what you need to do first, you need to go to, not control panel, you need to go to storage manager and you need to create this RAID and volume. So you go to volume, create, um, choose quick option for default uh, redundancy, which is SHR1 in this case, it was two drives. Uh, you can give it a name and stuff, but uh, you can just whiz through, you can just click next, to select which drives you're gonna RAID together. Um, by default, everything will be selected for you automatically. So BTRFS file system, which is gonna allow you to do most of the functionality. EXT4 is going to be limited file system, so <clears throat> you probably don't want that. So you click next and apply. At this point, Synology is um, having already volume uh, enabled, so things can be saved on Synology. It's going to take some time for a parity data to be written on these drives because now RAID is being synchronized in the background. It may take a few hours until it's finished, so you will see. Notice a slowdown at the start until it's finished. When that's done, the speed of data transfers and, and uh, operating system itself will speed up. So at this point, you will see that they are verifying drives and then doing checks. You can actually change this to be um, happening faster, but the performance will dip because of that. So you can leave this as it is so you can actually use things. So what you need to do now, you need to actually create um, a shared folder, which means that now once we go to volume, it means there's a storage space <laughs> with protection. You need to create a folder which you can mount to your mobile phones or computers. So you go for <coughs> settings, shared folder, click create, create shared folder, and then you can give it a name, something like test. You, you, you probably will want to name it differently. If it's like multimedia folder, if it's a documents folder, you can choose whatever name you want. If you want to hide this uh, shared folder from network places, then you can take that. Otherwise, it's going to be, uh, you, you could find this in network places very easily. So you just click next. If you have sensitive data in this folder, then you can encrypt this folder. We don't need to do that. Um, there's a uh, you can enable uh, self-healing uh, checksums, uh, automated checks on these drives, which is which could be useful, but we're not going to go for it. Uh, that's it. We have um, gone through the shared folder setup process, so we can apply. Uh, we can now set up uh, the restrictions, who can connect to this shared folder and who can change things, either just read or write. You can set these things up admin and uh, my username is admin level so I can do everything what I want <clears throat> so I can just click OK. So at this point everything is set up. You should be able to find this shared folder on your network places. You can connect and uh, upload files, download files on your desktop or you can mount this uh, on your phone as well. If you downloaded earlier drive up you'll be able to find all folders there. If you got an uh, iPhone, you probably can link your network drive with um, files, uh, app. So what you need to do is just click uh, these three dots and uh, connect to the server. And then you just choose, either type this in if you know the IP address or, or click one which is appropriate. And then it's going to mount this network drive on this. So every file you want to save, you can actually save directly on your NAS instead of your phone, so you can you can free up some space. The same with with moments up, you will be able to um, offload all of your multimedia to your NAS and free up some space on your phone. So the these this is uh, all what you're supposed to know about setting up a um, NAS on the software side of you uh, um, things and. Um, I hope this was helpful and uh, if you've got any questions you can always go to NAS Compares and fill the form uh, with your question there or send the email to info NAS Compares and, uh, and we, if, if the question will be interesting we can actually shoot a video and help others as well. I hope this was helpful and have a great day yourself.